Great. So, guys, uh, I got your responses. Uh, please allow me a minute uh, before I sh uh, transfer the presentation to Tejas, and he'll be taking it forward from here. All right. Am I audible? Please type in if I am audible in the chat screen. Please type in one. Yes, guys, please, I need a response here. Please type in one if I am audible and I am visible to you. Okay, thanks a lot. Seems like I'm audible and visible. Yeah, thank you. So, to give a brief introduction of myself, I am Tejas Ludaya. I'm a trainer with Delhi School of Internet Marketing. And I'll be going you through this Mangalwa Master Class today. So, let's start off. So, for today's topic, it's five winning strategies for a new e commerce business. First of all, even before starting off, I just had a little interaction from your end. What do you understand? And should an answer to me, please. I need a little interaction. Shopping post, yes, nice. Yeah, please, everyone. Selling through online, simply train online, nice. Reaching customer online, Rajiv says a platform where we can sell different products. Ujwal Singh says, Globally, nice. Mr. Chaudhary says, uh, in online without 
heavy investments. Garkapur say selling goods online. Yes, please. A few more. Postal Singh says, click order and relax. <laughs> really nice. That will customer send, not someone who is just doing the business. They have to pour in all of their blood and sweat. Lakshmi Narasimha says, commerce electronic. OK, that is exactly what e-commerce means. That is electronic commerce, dealing with money online. Really nice definitions coming in. So let's just start off. So it seems like all of you have a fair idea what e-commerce means. Yeah, Mohammed Hamid says build your online buyer. Yes, really nice. Yeah. So let's just let's start off. So the first thing we need to start off with is, yes, I got one more response here regarding e-commerce. OK, two more. Uh, Sunil Singh says, e-commerce is a transaction of buying or selling online. Electronic commerce draws on technologies. Really nice. Uh, Sanavas, please uh, maybe just change your mic or anything like that. Uh, everyone else, for everyone else, I guess I'm pretty much audible here. You check with your mic. Uh, for the rest of them, I guess I'm audible. Yeah, thank you. So how to start off a business, first of all? So first, you need a platform where you'll be selling something online, right? So for that, you need one of the channels. Could be the best way you can sell online is through your website, right? So you need a platform where you'd be selling your products. So It could be your social media channel, or it could be both. So social media channel help the website function, and few of the people actually. the social media platform sales card it would take a lot of pain and effort setting up those huge Enter data centers and inventory, managing them and stuff like that. They've got a huge number of them, a few billion. Enters and inventory, managing them and stuff like They've got a huge
if you don't understand tapping in one i guess just hitting one isn't too much of pain and labor it doesn't take too much of efforts i guess although i know that most of you are sitting here uh, sitting away from your valentine or your partner but still yeah it does take a little of effort any that much efforts from your end at least okay so the next step we are talking about here is creating content to build yeah and thanks for the wishes So you need to create content that would be spinning across all of your website. You need tailored content for your. Uh, suppose you are a brand like Flipkart or Amazon, you would be understanding what customers need. Your customer needs. Uh, what company does uh, average? What is the average e-commerce bias in India's requirements are? according to you i need a few inputs from your end mobile okay trust nice so neil says trust kiran says mobile what do the customers expect from the e-commerce in india consumer goods kiran says net banking mohammed says garments yes please i need all of your responses here i need an engaging audience vikas says apparels i'm asking their expectations what is their expectation what is an average online buyer's expectation in india Gaurav says most of the customers buy their day-to-day -day needs item. Vikas says trustable product. Ujjwal Singh says best price and unique product maybe. Nice. Vikas says lowest price and quality. Nice. Anil says quality product and minimum price. Balvinder says to get best product to their need and cheap also. Easy accessibility, more choices, one-stop solution, brand does fantastic customer service. Angshuman, you nailed it. Uh, Rajiv Puri says genuine quality and lowest price. Ujjwal says no mediators. Nice. Yeah. So an average e-commerce customer in India needs, first of all, the lowest quality. Uh, Ravi, I would suggest. Uh, Ravi, I would suggest that you want uh, to check your mic. Uh, an average e-commerce customer in India look out for the lowest price and on top of it the highest quality of course <laughs> I mean the budget would be this much and their expectation would be this much with the brand and apart from that they need uh, best quality warranty they want best quality customer service and stuff like that they want free delivery they want free add-ons and everything like that but they want the cheapest price of course, they want the cheapest price and on top of it, top-notch solutions. So that need to fill out that gap, you have to be really competitive in the market. Yeah, free trials, free samples, free trials, everything. I mean, the free thing here in India works out really well. Everything written in bold letters and in this capital, F R E W -E, works out really well in India because every other e-commerce buyer looks out for okay free 30% off let's go there seasonal offers or whatever kind of offers nice and so they just look out for those offers those sales geo is not working really well uh, I really I cannot comment on to this but their main motto is creating utility rather than uh, giving out something free they are making your data addictive and believe me uh, people are getting data addictive with geo so they leverage this thing by giving out something else in future. So they are waiting for that time. Till then, they are, they are giving out this free stuff. Not going deep into that. Yes, so an average customer's expectation in India is uh, getting the lowest, uh, lowest price, the best quality, the best customer service, free delivery, 
and of course the best payment solutions. So, so the best of payment uh, solutions would be cash on delivery because an average buyer in India still look out for cash on delivery rather than a prepayment mode because they still don't feel trustworthy enough to the brand that uh, whatever they pay out might be of the worth or not. So first of all they look out for is cash and delivery available. If not they'll ask uh, to some other person where their cash and delivery would be available if not available onto their key uh, pin code. So these are the average customers expectation. You have to create content and loops according to your audience. You have to understand what your audience is looking out for. So once you understand that, creating content across your e-commerce channel or website would be much, much more easier than to just uh, jump into the arena and just just be just looking out uh, surprised at whatever what your competitors are doing or not. They are building their strategies based on what their customers are looking out for, not what they First of all, you have to understand what your customers are looking out for. I guess this is pretty much clear. Please type in one if clear. Nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> A lot of ones from. <laughs> yes, nice. Yeah, the next thing is think brand. Why do you think they have asked you to think brand or use cross channels to capture the entire user journey? They want you to think brand because brand is something that would attract the users. Users are attracted to a familiar name. The customers, the clients are attracted to a familiar name rather than someone jumping off right out of the, so they don't want someone just appearing out of the thin air, they want someone who is established in the market, who is an established brand, yeah, quality, trust, loyalty. So they are looking out for that trust and trust comes out with years of building experience, years of selling in the market, with years of presence, the visibility that you make out in the market, the space that you create in the market. So. That is what they are looking out for. So you have to build your brand. You have to build that awareness across those channels. Okay. So the next thing is use cross channels to capture the entire user journey. What do cross channels mean? Oh, just a simple question out here. What the cross channel means, according to you? I need some input. What do cross channels mean? Or how well do you understand cross channels? I'm here to explain you all. Don't worry about that if you don't understand. Vikas says, platform for advertising. You don't have to worry, Mohammed. I'm here to explain you. Just in case someone knows, please type in the answer. What is cross channel according to you? Vikas says for advertising, Vinod says social media, Deepa says different segments, Just Lee says different online platform like blog, social media, email. Lakshmi Narsimha says some using someone's online platforms or using someone's platform. Neera Joy says different channels across web. Really nice inputs here. So cross channel means anything apart from your own marketing channel. So your channel for promoting your brand is suppose a website. You are looking out for some other channels to uh, support or build brand. That could be social media. That could be emails. That could be any other channels to support the growth of your brand. So you need cross-channel marketing or cross-channel advertisement to capture the entire user journey, how they are behaving online, how they are just looking out for solutions online. 
you want them to you want to understand them in a better way possible because you cannot rely on to one single thing online Ravi says multi channel marketing with the ability to interact with potential customers on various platforms really nice Ravi cross channel is advertising or marketing on to different channels online to interact with the customers to understand them better to their needs cross channels are any channels that are apart from your mainstream marketing channel so my mainstream channel is suppose my website so I'm uh, marketing via social media emails uh, anything else so those are cross channels so you have to use cross channels to capture the user's journey to understand them to interact with them so that you build a more trustworthy brand a more concrete brand and you get an edge over your customers or your competitors rather so to get an edge over our competitors we make this cross channel marketing and we interact with our customers over there because most of our customers are available online and interact online they like to interact and the one uh, the brands who uh, interact online are perceived as most trustworthy brand and they are the most successful brands online believe me so just log on to any of those Twitter profiles or Facebook profiles of these big shot brands like uh, Amazon Flipkart or any other e-commerce giant you'll find they interact with their users a lot so that is the reason that they that they get tractions online okay uh, Manohar I didn't get your questions I will be getting into the questions part uh, after a few minutes so first uh, we just will just go through all of these points so I guess cross channel is pretty much clear I'll be taking all of your questions don't worry once we go through all these points we'll be taking all those questions okay please type in one if clear Mohammed, you don't have to type so many ones. <laughs> yeah, please. You just press that one button. I need an interaction from every one of you. Please type in one. Really nice. Yeah. And the fifth point here uh, launch in multiple stores or channels. why do we need to be launching into multiple stores or channels why do we need to be present across all the channels or multiple channels uh, Satish I'm not at all moving the slides I'm at a uh, single slide don't worry about that I'm explaining it here Nidal says visibility really nice for visibility yes of course for visibility to get recognized to get more visibility really really nice input by Ujwal to use their goodwill for us we need to be present into multiple stores or channels to be using their goodwill for us so assume that there is a brand called uh, Louis Felipe or just say Arrow uh, a clothing brand a garments brand so Arrow has its own exclusive showroom Arrow is present in uh, central mall say Arrow is present in uh, lifestyle arrow is present in shopper stop arrow is present uh, do they need to be present into these uh, different platforms of different stores apart from their own exclusive channels that is to get more visibility and of course and of course to use their goodwill to gain more traction onto their brand because each and every brand has their own customer segment has their own visibility so we will be using their visibility to their goodwill or their trust factor to help us gain more customers over time to help us getting more visibility and that trust factor that every brand needs to market their business so we need this thing yes so 
Vikas Sharma says to reach out more audience on different platforms. Really nice. Girdhari Singh says branding. Sanjay says to capture most of the market in a very less period of time. Really nice, Sanjay. NAB Chaudhary says expanding their own brands. Okay. Uh, Angshuman says capture great share of customer segment, create a brand recognition to translate brand retention. Really nice. Uh, to give uh, Manohar, uh, Manohar is asking to build an e-commerce store is we need government permission. I'll be taking these permissions. Uh, I mean, I will be taking these questions at the end of the session. Uh, so we are anyway uh, going to the session, uh, the question and answer part. Just wait a few minutes, Manohar. Just keep your questions ready. We'll be taking all of them one by one. Don't worry about that. I am here to answer all of them. So is it pretty much clear that why we need to be present in multiple stores or channels. It's necessary for you to be present across all the platforms where your potential customer could be. Be present where they are present and that is how you gain more visibility or traction over time. It's not like you will be getting restricted to one single place and you expect the customer to walk into your place and uh, just buy a product from you. So that would be possible only when you have got a monopoly in the market. But uh, till the time you're building your brand, you need to be present in each and every of those platforms wherever your customer is present. Otherwise, you won't be getting much of the traction. You won't be getting much of the traffic. You won't be getting much of the desired sales for your brand, desired revenue for your brand. So to build out that recognition, to build out that platform for your to be present across multiple stores or channels and that is how you do the business okay. without discrimin discriminating between those stores or anything like that you get a presence over there and that is how you ensure that you will be gaining maximum amount of traction to your brand. Is this clear? Please type in one. We got some 50 people here and I don't see any more than 15 people typing in one here. Please type in one. All of you I need and high level of engagement here. That can, gives me confidence to speak more. Very nice. Yamini, you here as well? <laughs> uh, Ravi, I'm very sorry that you're facing connectivity issues. Yeah. But most importantly, even after those five points, I would like to add a few more from my end that you need a high level of after sales service, even after those everything you do about your brand okay so you need to be having a really strong after sales so it's about e-commerce isn't about uh, creating a brand isn't about uh, selling the best product uh, everyone is doing that out in the market so what you need to do especially apart from what your competitor is doing is make your customer feel special okay that is how you gain the trust over a longer period of time so you have to feel special. So if you can just take uh, an example that I have been doing here in the class. So while each and every one of you is typing something, I just read out your name and your question, and I answer that. So by this way, you'll feel attentive in this session. So this is how I make the uh, webinars or the attendees special. So you have to figure out the ways 
that how your customer can be made feel special. The making feel special could include giving out more promos or giving out uh, free things, just freebies, just as we're talking in about the Indian consumer, average Indian consumer. So you can uh, launch of promotional offers. You can give them maybe free delivery or maybe give them a loyalty program that you you are a, a, a long customer or a old customer or a regular customer. We can give you this much percent or extra off apart from what we are getting. And maybe one day delivery or maybe two hour delivery, just like Amazon is doing as of now uh, with Amazon now. No, no. By gen, uh, by giving off free doesn't mean generating generating trust. It means uh, then getting more sales. Okay. So nothing that is said is free is free. Don't uh, believe me. Nothing that is said is free free. Okay. No one gives anything for free. There is something uh, a motive behind that free thing that is appear that doesn't appear to you over time. But to develop a long uh, trust factor or long factor of authenticity with your brands or your customers. It is just the feeling special about uh, making uh, making them feel about your brand. So how do you make them feel special? So if I talk about Amazon, they make me feel special by giving that one day prime delivery. Okay. So I'll be taking questions. Just give me two, two more minutes. We'll be taking all of these questions. Okay. So. We are coming to that question and answer part. Don't worry about it. So, how to make them feel special? You give them the best in class after sales service. Make maybe give them extended warranty. Maybe just reply promptly as soon as they uh, come into the. They come on complaining about you. Even if someone complains about you, take that, digest it and reply to them with a smiling face saying that okay we are here to out you okay yeah one day prime delivery is the best example that amazon bought in so none of the brands had this one day delivery concept back then but they bought this one day prime delivery so most of the customers just shifted to amazon just because they are giving one day prime delivery okay so this thing. So you have to think that how you can make your customers feel satisfied or happy. So it could be just a prompt reply. Even if I receive a prompt reply saying that, OK, you will be getting back to you as soon as possible, I just calm down there. So if I have any issue or an issue facing my delivery or anything like that, and I'm calling them or I'm sending them an email or sending them a tweet or Twitter and if they reply me promptly saying that okay this is what uh, we'll be getting back to you as soon as possible don't worry about it we uh, we acknowledge this thing and we worry about your issue and we'll be resolving your issue as soon as possible only is this much would help a lot than saying that okay uh, and replying great and saying that uh, okay this is uh, the rectification of your issue or the resolution to your issue. So rather than just uh, getting with an answer late, come up with an answer and an apology in the beginning itself. Okay. Yeah. Make them feel comfortable with you, and that would this would help in generating trust. Okay. It's pretty much understandable. You have to make your customers feel special, and that is how you gain customers or retain customers in the long ago because the retained customers are those which will getting you more business in future rather than those new customers coming in. Okay. Yes, please type in one if understood. Everyone please type in one or two if understood or not. Yes. yes. So yeah, so we'll be taking quick questions here. Whatever questions are there, please shoot in. We are taking questions. Uh, 
Okay, Sanjay Singh says a very important question. E-commerce brands are doing everything to please the customer and make them feel special. But the study says the giants in e-commerce are suffering from loss. What is the reason behind? Okay, Sanjay, so every e-commerce out there is suffering a lot of losses. Um, I mean, there are a lot of reasons behind this because the delivery cost is much more than what they quote to the customer. Uh, just in case of Amazon, it takes a lot of effort to package that thing and to deliver it to the customer and when the customer just uh, sends it off, they don't send it back to the vendor, they just send it back to their warehouse where they have already paid it back to the uh, vendor. So they are suffering a lot of losses and in India especially they are suffering huge losses as of now they are trying to build this e-commerce scenario in India, the online buying scenario in India. So it takes a lot of efforts with, from their end and a lot of funds. So you might have just recently noticed that they got some $3 billion of funding to be poured in into the India to promote this e-commerce thing. So it takes a lot of efforts and all of them are suffering losses. Flipkart is in deep losses till 2019 or 20 on the least. They are not making any kind of profits. So all of their investor, investors' money is just uh, sunk in into that uh, thing. Uh, they are not making any profits as of now. So all of those e-commerce businesses out there, they are heavily invested. And as of now, they are trying to build a scenario ac across this thing. OK, NAB Chaudhary says, what are preventive, preventive measures uh, should take in down while starting an e-commerce business? Yeah. Uh, even before preventive measures, uh, just a second guys, please don't type in. I won't be able to read out. Just let me finish one question and then you can type in maybe. Okay. So the question is what are preventive measures should be taken down while starting an e-commerce business? So before starting an e-commerce business, you should really segment your audience whom you are targeting, really work on to this uh, research and development part and just target that portion, for portion of this customer which you think will be coming back to you. Uh, don't put in too much of money into acquiring new customers. Uh, do retention model, uh, work on to this retention model rather than uh, focusing on to gathering new customers. The new customers are those uh, which may or may not come back to you but if you make those, uh, if you retain those old customers, they will be getting you with really good business over a longer period of time. Uh, Anshuman says, how to choose the right partner to build a website is there if there is a limited budget. So Anshuman, you can, uh, there is an, uh, a requirement to choose a partner. You can just hire a freelancer, maybe from freelancer.com or Upwork or Fiverr. These are online platforms where you can find freelancers from across the world and you can pay them really cheap amount and get this work done. It totally depends on your requirement. Okay, Ujwal Singh says there are vendors, the way their vendors are cheating them. Okay, uh, so we can, cannot do anything in this thing. You have to get them through a process of verification so that the chances of cheating or just uh, this bluffing goes on down. The, we minimize the error in a longer run, but there is no way to evade them as of now, I guess. But in India, this is a scenario that may take some time to just weed out. Yeah, uh, Sayyad Husaini says, how should I select the products? Select the products depending on what you like to promote. So e-commerce is something that you'll have to promote all across the web. So select only those products which suits your interest as of now. Start off with them. So Flipkart just started off with books. Amazon started off with just books. So they were just platforms for books because they were just into books. And then they expanded. So first you uh, just define what you like to promote and would you be able to promote it and who your target audience is and according to that you just go on. Yeah, Sanjay, uh, as of now I guess uh, to minimize this thing you have to go really deep niche and uh, for that it is too difficult at this stage. Uh, Ravi is asking Just a second, I'm just... 
Oh, just a second. I'm coming back to it. Ravi Patap is asking, how could we get over this thing being a starter? Uh, Ravi, uh, I mean, you have to be it a starter or be it a giant. They have to go through the same thing. It's just that the giants are more experienced in doing this. They are a longer player, player in this arena. So while starting off, you have to make sure that you you don't keep all of the eggs in the same basket. That's what I that's that's what I would say. Okay. Vikas is asking, are you thinking is this way e-commerce is beneficial for the seller? Yeah, for seller, e-commerce is really beneficial because it expands their uh, customer base. Yeah. So Neeraj Roy is asking, why some particular category products get huge discounted often? Sometimes it's cheaper than the wholesale rate. How do they manage the losses? So it's not just the sellers that are putting in the rates, it's the e-commerce business that are pouring in the investors money to bring down the prices and gain the traffic for that particular product. How to understand the consumer behavior? Sanjay, you, you can understand the consumer behavior once you get into the market uh, and you need some data to understand. First of all, you'll have to run the business for uh, quite a few times only then uh, once you start seeing some data and you'll have to analyze it and then you'll come to know. Uh, Vikas is asking, is it good to set your payment gateway with Paytm or PayU for e-commerce? Because there are tons of payment gateway out there, Paytm, PayU, uh, Razorpay, Instamojo. It totally depends on to your uh, monthly transactions, uh, the total monthly transactions and uh, the gateway fees that they charge. So you have to understand where your, how your customers like to pay, is it through a credit card, is it through a debit card, net banking or, or any other mode. So you have based on everything, you have to choose a e-commerce payment gateway. Yeah, Mahavir is asking, want to hear more about digital marketing rather than e-commerce. Mahavir, I'm really sorry, it is an e-commerce class, so not a full-fledged digital marketing class. So Sayyad is asking, building an e-commerce on Shopify, which one is recommended? Sayyad, uh, Shopify or Magento, both of them are an end-to-end -end solutions for e-commerce. Shopify gives you solution right from the basics of choosing a domain and uh, space or hosting for your website and up to the level of uh, managing the inventory. Same is for the Magento. So you can choose any of them. Both are specialized for e-commerce. And if you want to uh, just tip, if you want to go with show Facebook ads, choose Shopify. Okay, That's a personal tip from my end. So I want to give, Gagan is asking, I want to give discount coupons to my customers to whom I have to contact I mean, is there any site for whom I can contact about this? Yeah, you can contact websites like Coupon Dunya and Grabon and there are tons of websites, Cash Garo and Cashback Offers and stuff like that. You can contact those websites, they'll promote your products, uh, they'll promote your website so that you can gain more traffic. It's the same thing, uh, being present on different channels, okay? Uh, Robin is asking, price is the only criteria to make uh, sticky repeat customers? No. Uh, once a customer comes back to you, it's totally that what their experience is about your brand. It's not about the money. If I'm going back to a brand, it doesn't mean that it is cheap. It could be one of the factors. Pricing could be one of the factors. But the major criteria that gets me back to the customer or gets me back to the brand is more of because I like uh, the experience with them over any other brand. It's about the experience, it's not about the price in the longer run. Gaurav is asking, how much investment is needed to start uh, a startup like e-commerce at initial level? It totally depends on what products you are going to promote, where you are going to promote, and how you are going to promote. Uh, there is no particular quotation for this. You can uh, go to Shopify or you can go to uh, freelancer.com or upward.com and type in your requirements and someone would be there to quote you maybe so that you can gain an uh, uh, initial quote. Uh, Vinod Kumar is asking which is the best payment gateway. Uh, Vinod, there, is, there are tons of payment gateway out there but to choose a payment gateway you have to think about everything about your e-commerce, where you are promoting, how you are promoting and what is your monthly transactions with your 
website or your platform. Uh, Ravi, digital marketing and e-commerce go hand in hand. They cannot be separated. Uh, Manohar is asking, is it possible to build an e-commerce brand or e-commerce business without investors? Totally depends on to at what level you want to operate. If you are a lot of money with you, you don't even need an investor. Maybe you can become an investor into any of those e-commerce out there, maybe in any of those giants as well. So it totally depends on to what level you are going to launch out. Yeah, so yeah, you're welcome, Vikas. Uh, Sayed is asking, will there be any benefit on cash on delivery over payment gateway? Uh, Sayed, both of them have uh, their own benefits. Cash on delivery is because most of our Indian consumers don't like to go with these uh, online payments as of now. So that's why the cash on delivery thing was invented. But now they need to shift out back to this online payment rather than this cash and delivery because of this cash crunch thing. So both of them have their own thing. Yeah, Anshuman is asking, can you suggest any barriers to entry which may be in adopted? Uh, can you please elaborate this thing? Manomar is asking if you don't have money, uh, you can approach people with your business maybe. First, I would suggest that uh, you should get your uh, really, you should get really crystal clear with your idea of what you are doing and how differently you are going to do. How differently you are going to do. So you can, con Vinod, you can, in that case, you can uh, contact Razorpay, maybe. Razorpay are one of the, I would, I won't uh, recommend, but yeah, Razorpay or Instamojo, or PayU, Citrus, all of them work really well. So Affinate gets you more business, Manoa. Angshuman, to have something which would let other players hard to do and then uh, get into niche market, Angshuman. Maybe sell something that no one else is something selling and sell in such a way that no one else could ever think of selling like. Okay. So Gaurav is asking, where can I find investor? Gaurav first get uh, your plan ready. Maybe you can pitch it at angel investors. Okay. You can find a platform for angel investors where they might be uh, willing to invest into your business. Okay. So Gagan is asking how much I have to pay for using payment gateway. Payment gateways are free to register, but they charge you a transaction fee anywhere ranging from 0.5% to 2.5% Gagan. Uh, Kiran, my office is in Bangalore. Satish, average how much we have to spend to start online stores. Uh, totally depends on to what platform you want planning to go into. If you are onto a CMS like WordPress, uh, it doesn't take too much. If you are onto Shopify or Magento, it would it would cost. So, so it will be the best source to make my e-commerce brand more visible, or what are the ways of making e-commerce business more visible with small uh, small budget? Yeah, to get more visibility, you have to get uh, like Facebook ads uh, work really well, Facebook or Google ads. They are one of the best ways you can target. SMS marketing, email marketing work out really well as well. Email is one of the most personalized form of marketing. They work really well. You have to understand how your audience commun communicates with you or what platform they are more engaging onto and you go onto that track. So Manohar is asking what is the percentage shall we pay to the investors? Totally dependent, depending on the investors, how much they are going to charge. Okay, so I guess guys, we are pretty much done with this session. Uh, what is the best and free email marketing tool? You can go with MailChimp. Gives out a free subscription for a small thing. Uh, team totally depends on to what your business is about. 
I have a plan ready with myself, but on a higher level, as I'm going to start my digital services agency, as it will need more investment, that's why I'm asking you for where I can investors. Okay, so you can find investors on angel investors. You can pitch directly to the people on LinkedIn, maybe. Okay. Uh, I would rather suggest that total. Uh, I would rather invest 50 to 60 percent of my budget onto online marketing and rest of it onto developing my product. Yes, Satish, with uh, our course, you can excel into all of these. Yeah, guys, so we have running out of time. So we'll be getting back. Any of your further queries can be shooted out to Karan at the rate dsim.in. He is a digital marketing manager and training and delivery head at DSIM. So you can shoot out anything, any questions or further questions to him regarding this. So he would help you out. Okay. Yeah, I just gave you the email address of Mr. Karan Sharma. So I'm really sorry that uh, I cannot get to all of you who have been running out of time. So any further questions can be mailed to Karan. He'll be helping you out with all of your queries. OK? So I guess this session was pretty much interactive, and you gained uh, something regarding e-commerce marketing. So please type in one. Please type in one if you understood something out of this session. Please, I, I guess there are not just four or five people out here. Really nice guys. Yeah, any of your further questions or queries can be mailed to Karan at dsim.in. I have just sent that in the group chat. You can check it out and you can send an email to him. Uh, any of your further questions, Angshuman, can be mailed out to Karan. He'll be guiding you with this. Okay. So it was really, really nice uh, interacting with you guys. This was a really interactive class. I got a really re nice response out here. And uh, at the end of the session, I would just like to uh, tell every one of you that happy Valentine's Day. Enjoy with your partners. And if you are single, just work on to your e-commerce business and build a brand. <laughs> OK? So see you guys. Really nice interacting with you. And thanks a lot. Bye-bye.